Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, anyone and everyone in between, my name is Brian Von Vier, representing Mr. Ripper, as always, loving the D&D stories. But today we're going to be talking about a very funny topic in Dumbest Backstories. Oh yeah, we're up to part three of what is the absolute dumbest backstory you've ever heard from a character. Part three. Now, if you have a dumb story you'd like to share with us that's a backstory of some character that you know or that you have, go ahead, leave in the comments below. My mother is a mermaid, my father is a minotaur. I've inherited the human parts of both and now I'm just some guy. No one believes me and think I'm just some crazy guy. So I go out of my way to act out both minotaur and mermaid customs in everything I do. The backstory of my first ever D&D character, Brugo, the orc bard. He liked to make music on his washboard, but he's tone deaf, so the music he makes is horrible. One day an evil wizard saw him and got so offended by his playing that he shrunk him from 8 feet to 4 feet. He then made it his mission to unshrink himself. It was funny at the time, now it's just cringe. Hey, I think it's actually kind of a cool concept. First game I ever played. My friend played an elf named Legolas. <laughs> when he was a kid, his parents never bought him Legos. So he burned down his village, killing everyone except my character, who was a homeless human Vietnam War veteran named Sergeant Drake Alexander. Because that was the name of the Hero Forge figure I used for him. My next character was T-132, a Warforged built from beer cans found in a dumpster by Sergeant Drake Alexander. <laughs> he would uh, talk to all the electronic devices that he came across, romance the toaster, and spend a night flipping a light switch on and off. <laughs> the light switch actually had some useful info about how to build a garbage cannon. It's not really dumb, but funniest backstory I ever played with was made by my friend. He was a half-orc who was the only son of an orc chieftain and expected to become a warrior and inherit and lead the tribe. One day his <clears throat> mom broke her hand and someone needed to knead the bread dough. Well, this boy needed the bread and instantly found his calling. He wanted to be a chef. His dad, however, was uh, not pleased with this and tried to push him into warriorship. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore and ran off into the night to find a chef to apprentice under. What made it worse though? He played the orcs as backwoods rednecks. <laughs> so the character's dishes were usually something like pie some pie or ham hock smothered in white chicken gravy. Two of my joke characters that I can remember. A half-orc barbarian who lived in his mother's village. He was too good at protecting the village and killed every bandit who dared to get near it. So they avoided the region completely got bored of the peaceful life, so they left the village and became a bounty hunter to keep killing bad guys and partying. A gnome druid whose forest was burned by a dragon. He wasn't mad because of the forest, he can regrow it. Wasn't mad about his house either, as he can rebuild it in short order. But his hair, oh, nobody touches the hair. And now it's all burnt and charred and bleh. So he's going out to kick ass and chew good berries, and he's all out of good berries. Ah, wait a minute. I'd like to point out that the username of this person who posted it actually was named Duke Quakem. I guess that's a true case of username checks out, huh? One from my group, Rika, a kobold paladin who saw a biblically accurate angel in a cave one time, and now he is convinced all lights are sacred. Regularly breaks lanterns to free the spirits within. He also wears armor that weighs about as much as he does. There was once upon a time a young Loxodon druid who showed much promise. He eventually decided to venture into the Underdark to study the bizarre creatures and fauna that lived there. He eventually came across a Mykonid colony and befriended them to the point that they invited him to join their meld. He became immediately hooked and ended up spending years mind melding with the Mykonids until he forgot of everything about his past life. Even the fact that he is actually not a mushroom. Eventually the colony got fed up with his bumbling, stoned ass and eh, kicked him out. Thus, 
shrunk the mushroom set forth on an adventure. Or at least to find snacks. My half-orc gets his power from his pet rock. Okay, okay, hear me out. He's a circle of starlight druid who uses a meteorite he calls Star Rock as an arcane focus. He thinks that Star Rock tells him stuff and does magic, but the rock itself is completely non-magical. So every time <clears throat> Star Rock does something, he's actually doing it himself. He just doesn't realize it. He's unknowingly using it as a proxy to unlock his true potential. Okay, I've got one. My friend, bless his heart, absolutely loves being creative, but doesn't have a creative bone in his body. The first character he made had a super long backstory, but it ultimately all boiled down to a half-angel monk fighter whose order had been wiped out, leaving him to guard seven stones of great elemental power in the ruined mountaintop monastery with an ancient heirloom of a weapon, a razor hat. He left because he got bored and wanted to adventure, somehow learned the stones had been stolen, and wanted to gain mastery of each element when he retrieved the stone and socketed it into a golden gauntlet. He literally tried to be Goku, Sephiroth, Kung Lao, and Aang with an Infinity Gauntlet. I was eventually able to talk him down to just an ASMR monk with a razor hat and key blasts. I once played a gnome wizard whose motivation for adventuring was that he wanted to get away from his wizard friends who kept making fun of him for sleeping with a minotaur. Later on in the campaign, his half-minotaur bastard child came to kill him. Uh, okay, I have some questions. Gnome, minotaur, gnome, minotaur! Something should be illegal here. Now, <clears throat> don't answer that. I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. Kind of want to know. Don't want to know. My girlfriend is the type that thinks human characters are really bland and boring. <sighs> so when finally making one, this was her backstory. <laughs> her character started off as an arapaima, which is her favorite fish, living in a big river. A drunken druid ended up talking to her with speak animals, and over the course of a few months, told the fish many battle stories. The two became friends. One day, while not drunk, the druid wanted to let the fish experience the type of life he had. So he turned the fish into a human. After the druid died, the fish went off to adventure as a drunken master monk, as she would base her fighting off the stories that the druid told her while drunk. I think someone missed the point of this thread. This was supposed to be the dumbest backstories, while this one is actually frickin' brilliant. And quite original, too. I was playing in a game of mutants and masterminds. My character was basically a barely sentient ooze. My backstory was that I was a widow washer working at a chemical plant when a superhero fighting a villain accidentally hit me with an energy blast and knocked me into a pool of chemicals. It made me super stupid, but almost indestructible. My entire point for being in the campaign was to find the villain who hit me with the energy blast. Many years ago, I came across a Tumblr post that made the argument that Legolas might have been all sylph-like and fine feature to human or hobbit eyes, but he was actually the jockiest jock that ever walked amongst the elves. So, of course, when I finally had a chance to create my character for my first TTRPG, a homebrew running Fate Rules, I debuted Broxena. <laughs> Woodland Bro. What's up, bro? He lifts weights by day and passes his nights trying good naturedly but unsuccessfully to impress the cute goth girl in our group. The script editor wanted me to do the John Cena meme, but I'm not doing it. You can't make me do it. None of you out there can make me do it. I'm not doing it. I'm really not doing it. Dun, 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 dun. No, 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 I'm not doing it. You guys can't make me do it. The dumbest but funniest one I have ever heard was a friend of mine who played a dwarf bard that was so incredibly vain that he refused to sing about anybody but himself. So he just ended up being a nuisance to the party because he would sit in the back strumming his lute, singing his own praises, being buffed to all hell, while the rest of the party was in battle. The dwarf also had horrible anger issues that were mostly directed towards his own party members. Hearing his stories was always a good time. Now, my personal favorite dumbest one is a character I never got to make. 
but she was going to be an elderly undead druid who was summoned by a necromancer to fight for him, but he never got around to dismiss. She was having the best of times in the afterlife and was pissed that she had to be back on Earth. So she decided to find the necromancer and give him a piece of her mind. She was also the sweetest woman who would use her abilities to make healing tinctures taste good. I guess you could kind of call her a grandma-like character. Really wish I could get around to making her, but the party disbanded. Also, I really don't think that's dumb at all. I think that's kind of unique and cool, so where, where's my healing tincture grandma at, hello? The bugbear story reminds me of one of my characters, an orc war boss from an evil campaign. During a raid, he took a librarian prisoner and ordered him to lead him to the city's most valuable possessions. The librarian took him to the city's world-famous library, where he learned about the concept of books and reading. He took the entire library's contents and the librarian for himself, learned to read, and learned a lot about agriculture, economy, strategy, yada yada. So yeah, he turned into the wisest orc ever and became obsessed with uniting the orcs and creating a kingdom that could ensure the long-term survival of his kind. Seeing him trick the Dark Lord's commanders who underestimated him and trying to educate his officers was hilarious. That, again, was not dumb. I like that. That's a great idea. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again, trying to make sure that all of you, yes you, out there in the wide, wide world beyond where I live, which is in Ohio, like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and make a comment down below, not only for the dumb algorithm robots that like to uh, cuck everybody all the time, but just because we like to read them. Also, if you want a story that wants to, uh, I don't know, maybe make it into one of our videos, put it down there too. We want to know your dumbest backstories from a character that you might have made or heard of. Now, of course, if you want to come say hi to me, Brian Von Vier, you can come do so through my website, which is in the description below. Mostly, I'm hanging out on Twitch or in my Discord, so come say hi, hello. Now, I want to end things on a positive note. I just want to say that every day can be good or bad. Yes, you might have a whole month of really good days. You might have a couple weeks of good days. You might even only have a day or two out of the week that's good. But the bad days, I just want people to know, no matter if you do have depression, anxiety, or ADHD or anything, or if you don't, they're normal. And you shouldn't feel bad for having a bad day. If you're depressed and can't talk to your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your partner in general, or your parents, or your friends, and you just have to hide in a room and, you know, put the blankets over your head and listen to emo music all day, or jazz, or whatever, do it. You're not abnormal for doing it, just go have fun. Do what you gotta do to recharge, to get your spoons back, and to relax, okay? None of you are abnormal for having these bad days, even if they last a couple days too. Love you all, be safe, be happy. We'll see you next time, bye for now.